This week on E! News, we're taking a look back at the semester that was. From music videos to top five, we are showcasing work from the students in the Digital Communications and Media program. Welcome to E! News. I'm Tosin Liadi. And I'm Wing Li Chen. Here's today's top stories. In the past few years, Lethbridge College has made a substantial investments in marketing, communications, and alumni relations. This has paid dividends in industry recognitions. Brett Sprouts explains. A team at Lethbridge College is basking in the recognition of more than a dozen prestigious industry awards. We're going to need more friends. <laughs> I know. Totally. The college's marketing, communications, alumni, and engagement team was a big winner at recent industry competitions. The college earned top awards from both CASE, which is the Council for Advancement and Support of Education, and the Alberta Magazine Publishers Association. The college's alumni magazine, Wider Horizons, won a majority of the awards. Editor Lisa Kozlowski says the publication strives to reach a broad audience. We try to approach it as a magazine that anyone would pick up uh, and find interesting. Um, but they just happen to have all the stories be about college people and, and programs. Alumni and engagement manager Stephanie Savage is busy preparing for this year's edition of the Kodiak Coke Cake Challenge. The event, which earned one of the top awards, is designed to promote alumni engagement. So we were lucky enough to win the Grand Gold Circle of Excellence Award for an alumni initiative with a staff of under 25 people. Um, which is great because we're a staff of one person. <laughs> Since it began entering prize competitions in 2014, Lethbridge College has won 75 industry awards. That included 11 Case Circle of Excellence awards, which are selected from over 4,000 entries submitted by 583 member institutions in 22 countries. Kozleski says the awards are a validation of the work that is being done on Wider Horizons and other projects. For community colleges, uh, Wider Horizons has since 2014 been recognized as one of the very best in the business year after year. And that um, is important because it, it lets us know that this work uh, stands up both in the kinds of stories we're telling and then it also stands up in the industry. Kozleski says Alberta colleges produce some of the best magazines in North America and often share ideas on how to improve their publications. For E! News, I'm Brett Brown. A breakdown of all the awards won by the Marketing, Communications, Alumni Engagement Team can be found on the Lethbridge College website and the news. Lethbridge College students are voicing their frustrations over being unable to find a place to live in the middle of Canada's housing crisis. International students are particularly impacted as the nation struggles with the difficult housing issue. I investigated the issue to discover what students say needs to happen. With the resumption of a new semester, international students are finding it difficult to find housing. They say this hurts to their stress as they adjust to their new environment. First-year business administration student at Ledbridge College, Chimaobi in Wahuiri, knows the challenges facing new students. That accommodation is a major challenge at the college here. Um, it wasn't easy for me, but with the help of my sister that is currently at the college, I was able to secure a space where I'm currently staying now. On-campus housing at the college was unable to meet with the demand of applications this year, as many of the requests were from international students with families. Family units were limited and filled up fast. However, the college did more to mitigate the circumstances. A significant demand this year. And then another thing we've done is we've opened up five of our two-bedroom units to two-bedroom family units. And so instead of having just eight family units, we now have... Um, uh, yeah, we, we more than doubled our family units. Browser says there are other off-campus housing options that students can explore that are affordable and in close proximity to the college. Inwa Ohiri says he appreciates that the college has made changes to help the situation, but as the international population at the college grows, so does the accommodation problem. In Qatar, at the college here, there are family members that came with their family, husband, wife and kids. 
So uh, if the college would make more provision for family units, it will go a long way in helping the issue of accommodation at the college. The housing challenge remains a pressing issue that demands immediate solutions. We urge all stakeholders, including government, to step in to address it effectively. Tosin Liadi, E! News. Ledbridge College is now discussing future plans to increase the number of residences on campus due to the increase in the number of students. This is an exciting time for the Leftbridge College Kodiak women's volleyball team. It's preparing to host the ACAC championship at the end of the season. Here's Dakota Fenner Chief with the story. This year's volleyball season has already started with preseason practices. The women's volleyball team is getting ready for a long season and hosting the ACAC championships at the end of the season. Veteran and co-captain Taryn Bash says she's excited about the upcoming season, which will be her last with the team. Feels like a super cool experience, like a super cool opportunity. We haven't really ever really gotten the chance. So to be top four last year and then have the chance to host provincials is like super awesome way to say bye to the program. Head coach Anna Schwerk has been coaching the program since 2014, but the college has been unable to get the winning bid to host the ACACs. Now that they have it, she's gonna do everything she has to do to make sure the team is ready. I was super excited when we found out we got to host. It's I think the last seven years we've applied to be able to host and we've always been turned down and so it's it's just nice to know that our program is seen as being competitive enough to host um, and yeah I just the the team has put in so much work they've they really earned this like I, I would have liked it to come earlier but honestly I'm just I'm really proud of the team that we have and I'm really excited for them to be able to experience championships at home. Burke says that after waiting seven years to finally host the ACCs fans are in for a treat Bash says it'd be a great week of volleyball and a chance to watch the championship games at the end of the season. Fans can expect a super exciting and riveting game. We're like a super high energy group this year. We love each other so much. So we're just like a bunch of best friends. So every opportunity we get to play with each other is like one that someone really wants to watch. It's fun. As the season gets underway at the college, the Kodiak's first game will be October 21st against Ambrose University. Students and fans can purchase tickets at the front desk. This has been Nicole Thunder Chief, E! News. If you are interested in catching a game to support the team, visit the Kodiak Athletic website page at gokodiak.ca. Still with sports, Major League Baseball has a historic and storied past. However, some teams are stuck in the loser realm. Justin Sibet has the top five World Series droughts. Hi, I'm Justin Sibet, and I've got your top five longest World Series droughts in Major League Baseball. Starting us off, we've got the only team to never even play in a World Series. It's the Seattle Mariners. It's been a rough 46 years. Next, we have the San Diego Padres. While these boys have seen World Series action, they've never lifted the ultimate prize in their 54-year history. In third, we have the Milwaukee Brewers. They moved to their current home in 1970 and have yet to lift a trophy. Next, we have the only team on this list still able to win a World Series this season. It's the Texas Rangers. They moved to their current home of Arlington in 1972, all without the top prize. Now, drum roll please, it's the Cleveland Guardians, of course, the only team on this list to have won a World Series, though they haven't done so since 1948. They nearly won in 2016 when the Chicago Cubs defeated them to break their own 108-year drought. And that's the top five longest World Series droughts. Thanks for watching. As it so happens, the Texas Rangers won the World Series this season, breaking their drought. The new MLB season begins next spring. Meantime, when it comes to sports, who is the best? The, question to this ans the answer to these questions are constantly changing, depending on the seasons and upcoming athletes. Angie Reeves has the top five favorite athletes, though she is not picking them on their athletic ability. Hi, I'm Angie Weep. These are my current top five favorite athletes. Number five, Rory McIlroy. The professional golfer from Northern Ireland has been around the game since 2007, and he's currently sitting at number two in the world golf rankings. Number four, Jimmy Butler. Butler is solely on my list because of the new emo look he showcased in Miami Heat's media day. He said this is how he's feeling as of late, and he likes it. Honestly, Jimmy, I feel that. I mean, look at it. Number three, Coco Goff. Listen, I don't even care about tennis, but her winning the US Open at just 19 is enough to get her on my list. She's the first American teen to get a Grand Slam singles title this century. 
Number two, Quinn Hughes. The hockey season has just started up and Vancouver Canucks captain is up there on my list. He says he wants to make the team a family atmosphere. Isn't that just so sweet? Number one, Travis Kelsey. He might only be on my list because he's dating Taylor Swift. I mean, I guess he's good at football and everything as well, but it's Taylor Swift. Go Chiefs or whatever. Well, those are my top five favorite athletes at the moment. We'll see how quick the list changes and when a new athlete reaches my radar. Taylor Swift was named one of the world's most powerful women of the year. The number f it's number five by Forbes. With her errors to movie and many album re-releases throughout the year, she has climbed her way to the top. From sports to the performing arts now, Ditsbury Alberta artist Maddie Bishop is trying to make her way into the music world with her new song, Jane. Maddie continues to write her own songs and perform in a small town. Find that song Jane on Apple Music and Spotify. A local up-and-coming artist wrote a song reminiscing important people in her life. This is If It's Worn For You by Christy Note.
you said that life was gonna be easy I'm just glad to have you by my side As seasons change and life fades away The only constant that remains is you to say you're my anchor you steady my soul and all my weakness you make me whole i can't imagine where i'd be if it weren't for you in this life i'm grateful for you through the highs and lows you see Because of you, I finally found my purpose What once was lost has finally been found I feel like I was drifting through life uncertain Until you found me Now my feet are firmly planted on the ground glad to say you're my anchor, you steady my soul, and all my weakness you make me whole. I can't imagine where I'd be if it weren't for you. In this life, I'm grateful for you. Through the highs and lows you see me. If It's Burn For You by Christy Note is now available on all streaming platforms. On to health and wellness now. And there are many gyms exercises that are great for growing and toning your muscles. Laura Castro shares our top five gym workouts. Hey there, gym rats. My name is Laura Castro, and I'm here to give you my top five gym workouts. Coming in at number five is the shoulder press. I like to do this one on a bench with a slight incline so all your power and exertion comes from your boulder shoulders. The number four spot goes to the leg press. Now this may be a problematic choice, but this one is a great workout to load up a lot of weight and still move it. And let's be honest, it's a bit of an ego boost. Number three is a concentrated bicep curl. You can use a bench or a machine or even your leg to really isolate that muscle and get that pump going. The number two spot goes to squats. While barbell squats are typically more popular, I do V-squats since I have slight lower back problems. Now, Coming in at number one is the calf bridges. Similar to hip thrusts, but you don't go down all the way and you burn those glutes. My name is Laura Castro and those are my top five gym workouts. For your New Year's resolution, you can think about adding some of these exercises to your workout splits. When lifelong performer and table legend Wow Bill was asked by his wife to write a love song for her, he dug deep and wrote this infectious melody. Here is Love Like a Cancer. Love is like a cancer, it grows and grows and grows. 
seeps in through my heart, babe, and dribbles out my nose. Love is a disease, baby, like a new kind of VD. You make me feel like I've got muscular dystrophy. You infect me, make me weak. You give me strepto, I can't speak. You make me moan like my toenails in grown. I can't move, cause I got athlete's feet. to the doctor to see what was wrong with me said I can't find anything justify my fee well he gave me pills and needles Lord took me in my bed stuck a flat stick down my throat this is what he said she infects you makes you weak she gives you strep hope you can't speak Makes you moan like your toenails in grown. You can't move, cause you got athlete's feet. She makes me moan like my toenails in grown. <coughs> I can't move, cause I got athlete's feet. and communities serve as inspiration for Wild Bill, who reflect on his co colorful past. Zach Robinson had a chance to sit down with him and discuss his career. Sweet Alberta music fills my ears. Sweet Alberta music fills the air as one Lethbridge artist speaks about his experiences being a musician. Wild Bill Lawson, who was born and raised in the Windy City, grew up surrounded by music, a passion that was passed down to him by his father. It was always around. My dad was a musician and uh, my uncles were musicians. They were in bands and uh, had an album out and, and uh, we were all just always playing and there was always parties and jam sessions and so there was always music around and uh, of different kinds and I just always loved it. And the thought of, you know, just being able to perform it and uh, it was always exciting to me. Throughout Wild Bill's past, he has dipped his toes into many flavors of music, from rock and blues bands to country and folk music and even theater. Wild Bill says growing up in Alberta has greatly influenced his music. Just the being here with the people of Alberta, they're, I've always enjoyed them. It's always been my home. It's a nice big wide open sky and, and you can go to a wheat field and, and sit in the middle of a, of a wheat field and play guitar. The message Wild Bill hopes people take away from his music is one about love and enjoying life. Well, I hope at the end of it, it would be enjoy life as much as you can. You don't really know what's happening. Nobody really does. Even if they say they do, they don't. And so no one's any better than you. Have as much fun as you possibly can. And uh, tell the people that you love them that you love them. Because you never know what's going to happen around the corner. And you never know how you're going to influence somebody just by a simple kind word during the day. It might be nothing to you, but it could end up being something super to somebody else. Wild Bill says through music he has created fantastic memories that he can look back on fondly, understanding not everyone can live the same experiences he has. Sweet Alberta music fills the air. Zach Robinson, E! News. Wild Bill Lawson continues to perform live in the town of Tabor and online, sharing his musical talents with the local community. While many bass artists often find themselves in shadow, today is a departure from the norm. Mark Solomon is standing by with more. Wing Lee, a seasoned bass player who brought his family to perform music with him, is doing great things. Sarah Finanga has that report. An extraordinary bass artist lays a foundation to the music that moves your soul. Ladies and gentlemen, allow me to introduce you to the heart of the band, a master of rhythm and melody. 
as we dive into the soulful melodies and electrifying grooves of this performance prepare to be mesmerized by the unparalleled talent and stage presence of our bass artist. Today, I invited Doug Freeman, the bass player from the well-known band Sweet 33. My name is Doug Freeman, and I am the bass player for our band, Sweet 33, which consists of myself, my wife playing keyboard, my brother-in-law guitar, and my sister-in-law uh, playing guitar also. So it's, yeah, it's a family band, <laughs> that's for sure. In a curious tone, I inquired, what drew Doug into the bass guitar? What made him like it in the first place? Um, honestly, at first, I was not musically inclined. And in grade eight, uh, I was into gymnastics and especially the rings. And during a uh, lunch, uh, a guitar player friend of mine was up with his band, and everyone were, was up at the stage listening to him. Yeah. And I was out in the rings, and I said, you know what? I think I'm going to play music instead. <laughs> so really? I just dropped it, and I picked up the drums and then the bass after that, and uh, I just stuck with it. As the conversation flowed, it became evident that Sweet 33's success was deeply rooted in the passion and education of its members, with Doug's bass playing as an essential role in the band's unique sound. I asked Doug of a performance that stood out and he could never forget. We were playing once in, the, uh, in a casino and my wife plays keyboards and she's right in front of me mm -hmm. and she couldn't really see me and the battery on my bass died and uh, she was wondering why people were kind of leaving the dance floor yeah. because I was switching a battery and then once I started playing again people started to come back and she was really oh. trying to play harder on her keyboards and she was like am I not doing my job good enough yeah, exactly <laughs> exactly and then she realized oh the bass is really important okay. yeah <laughs> so, true thank you yeah. so much for your time today and oh, that's all we have guys I'm Sarah Finanke and my guest was Doug and see you on stage soon because I'm your upcoming thank bass you. artist absolutely cheers there you have it folks, an incredible insight into the world of our bass artist. One lesson we should all take from this, every good thing takes time, so start acting now. Log on to sweet33.ca or sweet33 the dance band for sweet33 gig schedule. Wing Lee. Thanks Mark, that's a wonderful story. One of our assignments here in the Digital Communication and Media Program at Lethbridge College is Video Compositing Production. As a you are allowed to move forward when it shouts as green light, stop when it shouts red light. If a movement is detected afterward, you will be eliminated. Green light! I'm gonna get the money! Squid Game is gearing up for a return with a second season on Netflix. The expected release time will be around this Christmas. That's all the time we have for E! News. Thanks for watching. I'm Tosin Liadi. And I'm Wingley Chen. We'll see you next year. <laughs>